Welcome to In the Know. I'm Julia Supa. We hear it all too often. I'm stressed out. What exactly is stress? Joining us today is life transformational coach and author Jacinth Tracy to talk about women and stress and why what we don't know can actually harm us. Well, before we get into it, I want to remind everyone at home that Jacinth is here for the entire hour. So if you have any questions about stress or maybe you're feeling particularly stressed in your life, give us a call and she'll be here to answer any question that you might have. So let's start us off by telling us what exactly is stress because as we were mentioning, everyone, you know, how are you doing? I'm stressed out. Yeah. I'm so stressed. Yeah. And, and in a sense, that's true because we're living in, with, in a very fast-paced society where a lot of people are experiencing stress to various degrees. What we call stress is basically an emotional and physiological or bodily response to something we perceive as a threat or a source of pressure. Now, the word perception is very important. Mm -hmm. So stress in itself, the object in itself, doesn't have the potential to cause stress. It's how we interpret it, how we perceive it based on our past, based on our history, based on our genetics to determine whether or not we're going to say it's because people who have a stress response don't generally respond with stress to one thing. It tends to be a stress habit. Welcome back to In the Know. We have been talking about women and stress with Jacinth Tracy, a wonderful show. I mean, very, very informative, and I think relatable to not just women, but men. Yeah, but men too. Men I think, experience uh, stress as well. For sure. Let's delve right into this. Where does stress come from? Well, stress comes from internal or external factors, but primarily let's talk about external stuff. I believe we have a graphic here mm -hmm. about where women's stress comes from primarily. Women's stress primarily comes from the, their difficulty in juggling the multiple roles they have. I mean, as women in modern age society, we have so many things on our plate. Um, some of us are moms, some of us work outside the home, some of us have are, are married, some of us have responsibilities to our in-laws. This graphic, for example, shows a mom who's got, you know, a baby on looks one like arm. Me. <laughs> Just one kid, but it looks like exactly. me. <laughs> she's got a baby one arm, she's got a phone, she's got her uh, work email dinging mm -hmm. in the background, she's got the housework there, there's dinner um, the and that she needs to prepare, there's a dog who's hungry and yapping at her. That's just so many things to do mm -hmm. all at once. In the morning before you put your foot on the floor, you're already stressed out thinking of all the things that you have to handle during mm -hmm. that day. Because we generally take on multiple roles, that if, if we work outside the home, we tend to also do the bulk of the housework, the bulk yeah. of the child work, caring with responsibilities, the bulk of the organizing, the planning for the vacations, the planning, the, the driving kids back and forth, the, a lot of the pressure that comes from That's that. why women tend to have a little bit more stress than mm -hmm. men. So rather than her stressing herself out by trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to do with my child and how do I get physically to work, right. there's various things you can do so you can cut down on some of the responsibilities within those roles. Um, uh, with the employee thing as I'm talking about, maybe you can telecommute, work from home during the week that the child is mm -hmm. sick. So maybe you can't cut down on the roles, you're not going to get divorced, you're not going to get rid of your children, you're not going to mm -hmm. get rid of your family, but you can cut down on some of the responsibilities within those roles. And come up with maybe some backup plans. Exactly. If, if a crisis were to happen. If, okay. So women are more at risk, but a certain level of stress is good, you say? A certain level of stress is definitely good for us. Uh, we've been predisposed as human beings to uh, need a, a certain level of stress for a proper brain and mental functioning. I mean, everybody says, oh, I just like to be sitting on the beach with nothing to do. Well, how many of us can actually sit mm -hmm. on the beach with nothing to do for a prolonged period of time? We'd probably get bored and a little antsy. Yeah. A good sort of stress, when we talk about stress in the way we're talking about now, we're talking about stress as de-stress. It comes from the Latin word to draw or to pull apart. So when we're distressed, we're actually feeling that we're coming apart at the mm -hmm. seams. But there's a good kind of stress called eustress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, -E -S -S, which basically is, at, we use it to motivate us, we use it to propel us to action, and we use it to set goals. So for example, when you think of athletes in competition, they're under a great deal of stress, mm -hmm. but they're using that stress to motivate them, they're using that stress to propel them to action and to win. And so for us in society and as regular human beings who are not in the Olympics or mm -hmm. athletic competitions, we need that stress to get us out of bed every morning. We need something on our to-do list to actually propel us to action right. and to move forward in a life. A goal, a motivator. Exactly. So low stress is not good and high stress is not good, but a middle type of stress 
is very good for us. So it's not like a gas meter in the car where you want a full tank because mm -hmm. a full tank gets you places. When it comes to stress, a uh, half tank is very good. Low stress won't get you anywhere because you're not motivated and your brain won't function. So, for example, when people are retired and they don't no longer have that employment stress, they're often encouraged to do things like word puzzles and volunteer and do things like that to keep their brain active. Mm -hmm. Our brains need a source of stress and challenge to keep us functioning properly and moving forward in life. We wanted to talk about chronic stress versus acute stress because, right. as you were telling me in the break, you don't wake up all stressed out one day. Exactly. There's a difference between short-term stress or what we call acute stress and long-term exposure to stress, which is called chronic stress. So acute stress is short-term. It happens a little bit. You're, you're driving home in traffic. You know, you're a little irritated because it's bumper to bumper. Or there's a snowstorm. But in an hour, it's over. So right. your, your hormones get back to normal. Your muscles get untensed. Mm -hmm. But chronic stress is a continual exposure to that stressor. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're living next door to somebody who has a uh, guest over for the weekend, and they bring a large, noisy, barking dog. Mm -hmm. And so for that one day, all you hear is bark, bark, bark all over the neighborhood. But at the end of the weekend, they're gone, never to be heard from again. Mm -hmm. But So that's acute stress or short-term stress. Right. Now, in the chronic example, your neighbor buys a large, noisy, mm -hmm. barking dog, and day in, day out, you're exposed to that loud noise, which is a source of stress for you. You can't sleep, you know, you can't put your baby down for a nap. It's affecting your life in terms of your physical and emotional health. That's chronic stress. Right. And so in terms of the consequences of that, acute stresses have less consequences for your emotional and physical health than, chron than uh, chronic stresses do, because chronic stresses are long term. <laughs> Tell us about how stress does affect okay. how we think, how we perceive. Exactly. How you perceive something can actually make things worse. So, for example, the stressor, as we talked about earlier, doesn't have any power in and of itself. Mm -hmm. It's actually how we interpret that stressor. So when we find things as stressful, we continually have a stress brain, as we call it, and can lead to all sorts of things. The graphic up there shows that this person is being bombarded with feelings of fear, and guilt, anxiety, anger, depression, worry, they're nervous, they're resentful, they're feeling overwhelmed, they're feeling shamed. Mm -hmm. These are all types of stress reactions because remember we talked about stress meaning distress to be drawn out or pulled apart right. or feeling overwhelmed. And so stress affects our brains, actually. We have the part of our brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is right at the very front, and that's responsible for our, our higher order thinking. And that's really disturb, uh, disturbed when we are under stress. We get this fuzzy thinking. We can't think clearly. We forget where we put our glasses. We mm -hmm. forget where we put car keys. And you notice that when we're stressed, it takes us forever to get things done. Mm -hmm. Since we talked about the brain is a big part of our central nervous system. And you know, you got your neurons firing all over the place. You've got a million things on your mind and when you have a million things on your mind you can't focus on any one thing mm -hmm. and that's the problem with stress it and, and all of that distress causes us to feel us out of control and it causes us to feel powerless and that brings us to feeling maybe guilty that we're not doing a good mm -hmm. job in all of these roles that we're talking about. It causes us to feel maybe ashamed that we're not as good as the person next door who seems to have her act all together right. and seems to be juggling everything. Perfect segue to connecting the dots, as yeah. you call it, because our physical and our emotional are really tied together, right? They're, How we react. Yeah, they're very much tied together. So, for example, if you're under physical stress, people with chronic diseases, for example, or battling long-term diseases, tend to be more at risk for issues like depression mm -hmm. and anger and frustration because that eventually, your physical ailments eventually have an emotional trigger response in terms of your stress response. And the same thing is for emotional. If you're constantly, as we've discussed, mm -hmm. under emotional stress, you're more likely to have your cells break down because of the central nervous system impact, and then it leads to physical um, problems as well, as we talked about in the previous segment. Right. So your emotional and your, your physical response to stressors are very much interconnected and they actually reinforce each other. Mm. Welcome back to In The Know. We have been talking about women and stress with Jacinth Tracy, a wonderful show. I mean, very, very informative and I think 
relatable to not just women but men men, but men too men I experience think, uh, as well for sure um, the women that are at home watching I'm sure would be eager to know how we reduce the level of stress in our lives because a lot of us have all of these balls that we're juggling yep. and a lot of us create more work for ourselves we create more responsibilities exactly. for ourselves we create or manage our stress okay. better uh, women need to see that themselves as as valuable human beings who deserve the time to take care of themselves they have needs mm -hmm. too so busy taking care of the children and the husband and the work responsibilities and making sure that they're all set that they put their own needs last mm -hmm. and the problem is when you put your own needs last you're training people to put you last as well mm -hmm. we teach people how to treat us I think too many times we try to be perfect and when we try to be perfect and fall short we, be we beat ourselves up and so, as women, we're socialized to have everything nice, you know, sort of the step for the wife where everything is perfect at home, and then we have to go outside the home and to make sure that everything is perfect um, in our work environment. Well, that's, and we also have to look perfect. Mm -hmm. We still have to go to the gym. We have to make sure our hair is done. We have to make sure we put makeup on. All of that's driving. I'm laughing because you didn't see me before the show. <laughs> Oh, me either this morning. <laughs> but that striving for perfection sets up pressure in us. And that pressure, as we talked about, stress means to pressure, to pull mm -hmm. apart, to draw apart. All that pressure is not good for emotional health, and it's certainly not good for our physical health. During the end of our hour, Jacinth Tracy, you've been a wonderful guest. In the last segment, we talked about... Um, at one point women putting themselves last all yeah. the time is maybe something innate something we're so used to tr taking care of everyone else yeah. we don't take care of ourselves and you yeah. made an interesting point that it's not selfish to be selfish exactly and, and the word selfish you know let's not use that let's just say you know we're, we're, we're taking care we're doing some self-care mm -hmm. and I make the example of when we're on an airplane and the instructions are, you know, when they're giving the instructions and before the flight takes off, then the event of anything untoward happens, put your own oxygen mask on before attending to the needs of others. And they do that for a specific reason. Because if you don't put your oxygen mask on first and the pressure in the cabin becomes unstable and you pass out, you're not able to help any, you know, mm -hmm. junior or vulnerable children or other people in your care. We also have to make sure to put our own oxygen mask on first. Because if we get emotionally sick, we, let's say we fall into chronic depression mm -hmm. or um, a generalized anxiety or we get some physical health problems or their chronic physical health problems we can care for our families mm -hmm. so the thing to do is to make sure that we attend to ourselves enough that we're able to continue to care for them so we're doing ourselves and our families a service by putting ourselves first some of the times it's not selfish it's self-care all right we've got a minute left You've been a wonderful guest. How do Thank people you. find you if they've watched the show and they say, you know what, I, I'd like to talk to this lady? I would love to talk to them <laughs> further. You can talk to, uh, call me at uh, my 1-800 number, 1-855-440-1651. That's a toll-free number. Or you can get in touch with me at info at Wired to Succeed, Wired the number to succeed. My website is www wired to succeed .com. A wonderful guest. Thanks to everyone at home for watching. We'll see you here next time on In the Know.